Hey friends, today I'm going to be debating Richard on whether or not Swords of Plowshares is the most overrated card in Commander. For a long time, Richard, you've been saying that Swords of Plowshares is the most overrated card. I think this card is perfectly rated, so let's settle it in a quick debate. Why do you hate this card, Richard? Why Why Swords of Plowshares the most overrated card? Okay, Swords of Plowshares, the most overrated card in Commander, because it is actually one of the best cards in 1v1, okay? It's efficient removal, it's one mana, right? You one for one someone, you're probably trading up in mana, because your removal spell costs one, so if their creature costs two or more, you're, you're winning. But in Commander... This is inherent card disadvantage. Every time you play one-for-one one removal, you should be very, very sad, right? So you remove a creature, your opponent goes down a creature, right? You go down a card, you go down mana, but two other opponents get an advantage, right? Their two opponents just went down cards and mana. They, they stayed neutral, right? They went up cards virtually. So you want to be the other two players, not the player getting removed or casting removal, so a way to think about this is three players gain an advantage, right? Your two opponents, yourself, the person that got the creature removed got a disadvantage, but you spent cards and mana. What does that sound like? That sounds like group hug. That sounds like Howling Mine, right? You don't play Howling Mine and like be happy with it, right? Like you actually have to have a point to it, right? You are helping two players. So instead of thinking of spot removal as, you know, removing a problem, think of it as helping two other players get away with the problem without spending any resources or mana. You do not want to be that player. All right, so I definitely agree that this is card disadvantage. Like you said, you're down a card, your opponent is down a creature, and two people who are not part of this interaction are basically up a card compared to the the other two people. But I think that sometimes card disadvantage is a necessary evil like it's not it's not ideal and it's not something i would jam my entire deck with but sometimes it's a necessary evil and sometimes i'd rather put myself down one card and not lose the game and that's where it's where it really comes down to is source of bioshares in my opinion in other spot removal cards while being card disadvantage will literally save you a game of magic because sometimes there's just a big threat on the board a threat that's either going to win the game on the spot or it's going to attack you for lethal and you're going to lose the game on the spot. And Swords of Plashers is that silver bullet in your deck that's going to make sure that you don't lose the game. And while, yeah, it feels bad that you're going to go down a card relative to the rest of the table, you need it. You need it to live, Richard. No. You know you know, it's a good form of removal, Tomer? <laughs> Player removal. We'll go back to the same scenario, right? Someone plays something scary. Let's say they put a Prosper on the battlefield, okay? You remove it. You give two people an advantage, you and your opponent go down, you know, problem solved, or you let it live, and now it's a 3v1, because your opponents are equally afraid of the Prosper. You you have three times the cards, three times the turns, three times the combats, uh, you know, three players versus one, and you're on the team with three players, right? So I would take those odds rather than, you know, putting myself back and then evening the odds again, right? And at a slight disadvantage, right? Just just take the 3v1. You don't need to remove everything. <laughs> but what if your opponents and you cannot deal with the threat at the table? What if the, the Prosper just is going to run away, uh, run away with the game? Don't you want to have a card that can just, like, stop it in your hand whenever you need it? I'm not saying you throw the Swords of Plashers at the, any threat that enters the battlefield. Obviously, you just won't have enough cards to do that. But sometimes there's just going to be something that you got to get rid of or else the opponent is going to snowball or run away with the game or just win the game outright. So, I mean, sometimes you will lose, right? But just like sometimes, even if you have the Swords of Plowshares, you'll lose, right? Like, sometimes they may play something that's not a creature. Or, it's 2023, every creature ETBs and combos, it probably doesn't even do anything. Like, there's a Thassa's Oracle, a Crater Hoof, good luck, right? Someone plays a Smothering Tithe, good luck with your Swords to Plowshares, right? So, yes, sometimes you will lose, but a lot of the times, like, either you 3v1, or you actually do nothing, and then the next person uses their Swords to Plowshares, like, that's, like, the ultimate win for you, right? You don't even have to do anything, Right? Or it's not as scary as you thought it would be. Right? Like maybe they do play Prosper, but then the next person plays like, I don't know, an opposition agent or something, a Ristic study, and like the, the game evens out and you didn't need to remove anything. So, yes, sometimes you lose, but lots of things, you know, 75% of the time you're losing in Commander. Right? What you need to do 
is make sure you're not just always assisting the table and alley-ooping everyone else to win by just continually firing off spot removal, putting yourself down just to keep the board safe, right? Like, you don't really need to do that. Okay, here, here's the problem in 2023. As Krim would say, everything is an Avengers-level threat. Okay, like every, every commander snowballs out of control. Every creature gains so much value, you can't leave them on the table. Like, what are you going to do? Like, fire off 12 spot removal spells? That's ridiculous, right? You need to deal with this in a sustainable manner, and that is probably board wipes. Just like in 1v1, if your opponent is playing a token deck, you're not like, oh, yeah, swords to plowshares. Let me, let me board that in, right? It's, it's the same in commander. You have three opponents. There's so many creatures. They're all crazy threats. You need to deal with them, and a source of plowshare just doesn't hack it, right? I mean, I agree that board wipes are very necessary in Commander, and I feel much better casting a board wipe because it's going to be inherent card advantage when I'm going to be choosing when I want to wipe the board. Generally speaking, my opponents are going to lose a lot more permanence in a board wipe if I'm casting it than, than myself. So it's going to be card advantage. It deals with lots of threats at the same time, and it can deal with threats uh, like an instant speed removal cannot i love board wipes and i think that's an, another topic in itself and maybe people are undervaluing board wipes in 2023 but at the same time i still don't think that discounts the appeal of instant seed instant speed spot removal because not always is going to be a threat being able to be answered by a board wipe what if an opponent just drops uh, a combo what if you're in a, like a combo focused meta where somebody just drops one combo piece and then the other combo piece on the same turn and just wins the game you need to have a way to interact with that or else you're just going to lose a whole bunch of games so maybe board wipes work really well in certain metas where somebody develops a board and then passes and you can answer that board but what about combo focused metas what about uh, situations where the only answer is instant speed wouldn't you want to run it uh, instant speed cards that can remove stuff like source of postures in those menas? That That is correct, Tomer. We do need instant speed interaction. And Swords to Plowshares is not it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if I had to rely on instant speed to stay alive, I would not be choosing Swords to Plowshares. Right? I would be choosing Teferi's Protection. I would be choosing Dawn Charm. I would be choosing Static Effects like Maze of It, Ghostly Prison, Generous Gifts. Like, Swords, like, in... In 2015, Source of Plowshares probably got you out of jail for free. Like, you know, it actually killed everything. In 2023, it's like a Planeswalker comboing off. It's it's like a Crater Hoof hitting the battlefield. Like, Source doesn't actually do the job when it's called upon, right? So if I had cards to keep me alive, I would not be really choosing Source of Plowshares. I'd be choosing one of the more versatile answers to the format. I think with versatility, though, something like Generous Gift or even like a Ghostly Prison Dawn Charm, these cards have their ups and downs for sure. But Swords of Plowshares is still a one mana instant. It's still an exile effect. And it's always going to have a really good target, which is going to be an opponent's commander. Everybody has a deck built around their commander. Their commanders are almost always going to be a creature. There's like a couple uh, exceptions to that rule. But for the most part, they're all going to be creatures. So I feel like Swords of Plowshares isn't actually like that narrow of an answer to most of the things they're going to be coming across. And yeah, I think just having something that you can have one mana up and, and get get you out of jail, even in 2023, I think is going to still be uh, more than reliable uh, compared to other options as well. I think Swords is still still a number one, still a number one answer to these these problems. Yeah. So no one will ever dispute that it's efficient. It's one mana. I guess, I guess the black. Uh, commander focused one the one where you have to have your commander out removal is more efficient because it's technically zero but swords is efficient lightning bolt is efficient we don't run that healing solve is efficient like just because it's efficient it's efficient uh mana wise but it's not efficient card like card wise right like your hand it's a card in hand it's a a deck building slot right you had to cut something to put in your deck i would argue it's not efficient there right a more general answer would be more efficient, like a generous gift. And a something that doesn't put you down against the table would be more hand size efficient. So yes, it wins mana efficiency, but it loses the other two areas. Just like you don't run Lightning Bolt. You just don't need the effect, right? It's not strong enough in Commander. And I would say targeted creature removal is not strong enough. And yes, you can hit a random willy-nilly Commander, but did you want to do that? Like, did that further your game plan like are you winning because you fired off spot removal on a commander if yes then great 
But you can't just be like, oh, I found a target. Let me just randomly kill this thing, make an enemy for no reason, and then like lose the game, right? Like You don't just want to fire it off and say, I have a target, right? You want to make sure it's a high impact card that increases your probability of winning the game. All right, you heard both sides of our arguments, and now it's time to choose. Do you think that Swords to Plowshares is overrated in Commander? Let us know by voting in the poll down below. 